face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys, and welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Bitter? And this week we're looking upon the Mega Pokemons of Generation 6 that actually are making one big stat rise in the meta, being actually Mega Scissor versus Mega Pinsir. Now, before going in, I want to say, really, I'm sorry I've been able to record last week this episode due to PC issues, which I'm still having. I haven't been able to edit it the way I want to, and hence, the quality is not as well as I want to, yet my voice are as perfect as ever. So let's actually be grateful about that, right? Now, these two Pokemon, as stated, are on par with one another. We actually had Pinsir before on this versus Heracross, where Heracross barely won, and it has a lot to do with its typing combination. That said, once Mega Pokemon was introduced, Mega Pinsir, in my honest opinion, became a lot better than Mega Heracross, hence Mega Sister is the one it faced, because, let's face it, there really are no other things like this. Great dual combination with, of course, offensive stabs, and really, uh, with great priority and good uses of its overarching bulk, these two are the closest thing to one another, and they are, while different, still very much the same in how to function in the meta, and it's up to me to go over their stats, move pool, and overarching theme to find out which one of these two really are better. And with that said, let's check out the Pokemon that was introduced first, which was actually Pinsir. Let's check that out. Now, one can talk about Pinsir without actually mentioning its typing combination at first. Bug flying, famous for being probably the worst combination ever. And for the very right reasons, really. The thing is here, bug flying necessarily aren't too bad defensively, but due to Stellar Frog, it is a hindrance that's naturally are pushing this type of combination back. That said, Pinsir represents the best of them, being very bulky with this type of combination. We have immunity in ground, stronger resist, finding and grass, and all resistant to bug. Trust me, this is actually fair light. And the issue here is, of course, the weaknesses, which are pretty broad, which weaknesses to electric, fire, flying, ice, and very weak to rocks, as stated already. Overall, though, offensively, the typing is very, very scary, and, well, Pinsir's design is very, very scary, so it isn't an hindrance to it, but it is an issue that follows with the typing. However, when currently looking at the stats on a Pinsir, one really, really must say, things does resolve themselves. As I stated with the previous video with Pinsir, yeah, it was naturally bulky, however, it is bulkier now, but not all of that, it actually is stronger, and actually a lot stronger. We have 65 HP, so we are unchanged. 155 in attack that's um that's pretty cool like that's that's a lot that that's a dangerously a lot 120 in defense 65 special attack not necessarily gonna care about that 90 in its special defense and the speed tier of the niche 105 when i say niche i mean that basically you're outspeeding those 100 base Pokemon and that is always a strong thing and also you can go adamant versus 85 base Pokemon so overall I would say the Pinsir's stat distribution is a very fair one of that and a very dangerous one of that because this basically means that not only can it take a hit it probably can outspeed most of the meta also and with the moves it gets it becomes a very very dangerous threat fast and which makes Mega Pinsir one of the primary sweepers in OU and also in League Concepts. Though we also have another stature being abilities to Pinsir, while it has Air Late as its primary ability once it Mega Ball, I really have to mention two abilities that just had it really, really, really good on its previous evolution before it goes to the Mega. With Hyper Cutter, which negates any type of attack reduction on your Pokemon, always great versus a meta where Landorus is present. However, we also have Moxie, which boosts your attack by one once you get a kill. So overall, I definitely say that Air Late, which boosts your attack to, by 20%, that makes sure that every um, normal move becomes a flying move, is very, 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 very dangerous. Um, the combination of actually getting Moxie on board with that is really good. The reason this Air Late is such a good ability is because there are no other Pokemon like this that has a flying stab that aren't actually having a big time of missing, or even worse, like Brave Bird having a really, really strong recall. This means that we can spam flying moves, which offensively is very, very good in the meta. Very few resistors, and a few that do aren't necessarily liking 
The filler moves that are natural, such of course a few that resist are steel types and rock types, and both of them are assessing to ground or finding, which is something that actually Mega Pinsir is covering. So overall, the ability here is very, very, very fair, and as said before, is one of the reasons it is a primary threat in the meta. However, a Pokemon is only as good as a Moopla allows it to be, and while of course the window on the screen here isn't showing, we have a few moves to talk about that makes Mega Pinsir the great threat it is. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about the setup move. We have Bulk Up and we have Swords Stance. Swords Stance is the one you're going to use the most, but you have both. And both of them, of course, emphasizes on the Pokemon's necessarily bulk and offensive prowess to be able to hit even harder. When it comes to the stab move, it does get... Basically, it doesn't get any fly moves. However, it does get a plethora of normal moves, such as Facade, Return, and Quick Attack, which has a priority. Which, overall, really strong. Very, very good combination to have indeed. And of course, on the bug side, we have Exister, which I believe is the only relevant one. However, it is unfortunate it doesn't get Leech Life, but, you know, what can you do? Felsting would have been kind of nice too, consider the proudness that is its attacks at 155. Yeah, that would have been pretty epic. However, when it comes to the filler moves, I do believe it has decent filler moves, to be completely honest. First and foremost, we have Close Combat. Best fighting move in the game, and consider how fast you are, you aren't necessarily going to be worrying about being able to be out slowed or outpaced by anything else. So the defense drop doesn't necessarily matter. We have Throat Chop, Knock Off, both of them being extremely relevant. Since, you know, Dark moves are generally just good. Stone Edge and Rock Slide are also here for being able to hit other flying types. And Earthquakes. So that's basically it. To be completely honest, it has also Stealth Rocks, but we have a few things that are lacking here, that which I really, really would have liked it to be seen. One of them being, of course, Ruse being able to covering its new typing. However, it isn't flying until it Mega Evolves, I guess that makes sense. But overall, all I can say here about Mega Sister is that it has the moves to hurt everything super effectively easily. It has attack stat to make sure that the most thing dies instantly, making Mega Pinsir one of the most dangerous Pokemon in the whole game. So with that said, how can even Sister compete? And yeah, that's the question we are asking. Much like to get Pinsir, we really need to talk about the typing combination on Scissor because Mega Scissor, in my honest opinion, has probably one of the best, if not the best, typing combination, Bug and Steel. What that means is that you actually have 8 resistances and 1 immunity and only 1 weakness to fire. And trust me, that's, that's, that's good. That's all you need. Um, combination we do resist here is immunity and poison, strongly resist grass. Resist, Bug, Dragon, Fairy, Ice, Normal, Psychic, Steel, and I stated weak to fire. Uh, though one thing that stands out is that you are not immune or resistant to a very common combination that is Edge Quake. However, it is to be stated that due to this combination being so strongly resistant to everything else, one probably isn't suffering all that much. And of course, this type of combination I stated probably one of the best in the game. So, how does Sister take advantage of that type of combination? Well, it's bulky. It is the bulkiest. Uh, 70 base HP, which is fair. 150 in attack, 140 in its defenses. 65 special attack, doesn't matter. Special defense of 100, resolving one of the regular sisters' biggest issues of not being able to take a flamethrower. Now it's very likely to do. And 75 speed, yeah, not the speediest, but we will find out why that doesn't necessarily matter at all in a very, very few seconds. But overall, Mega Scissor is a very, very bulky Pokemon with a very high attack stat and is the overall one of the primary threats in OU for this very reason. It should be stated, though, that it got nerfed, actually, in Generation 7. Not necessarily by its own, but due to a new move of Psyche Train and Tapu Lele, making one of its primary functions not work as well. That said though, its ability technician, it is a very good ability, boosting of course any move that is base 60 to of course getting boosted by 50% becoming 90 base. And what that means is that a few moves here that get boosted by a lot, making it one of the strongest hits in the game and with 150 in base attack, everything hurts that comes with this Pokemon. When it comes to Sister's move pool, we're gonna actually start off with the setup moves that is first. We have Agility, Sword Stance and Curse. And yeah, that's a lot. While agility isn't necessarily as interesting, Sword Stance most certainly are, and it is mainly because of its, um, I would say, its uh, best move in the game, being Bullet Punch. While other Pokemon just get it, Scissor is the one that statuarized it, 
bullet pumps be boosted to actually ignite the base and be one priority. Yeah, that's um, that's things, everything that comes in. And with sword stands, you know, mm, speed is never going to be an issue and you always hurt hard. You also have quick attack, going to capitalize on other priorities. When it comes to the other step, however, the bug step, we have bug bite, which also is boosted by technician, making it slightly stronger than exister. And U-turn, which is most likely one you're going to settle for, mainly because of... Um, Piloting is always great, and with a Pokemon this bulky, and necessarily would say slow, a slow U-turn is always going to be great, because this Pokemon necessarily do force it switch out, so being able to capitalize on that, yeah, it makes the Pokemon really, really good. It has very strong filler moves also in Super Power and Knock Off, but usually just gonna go for the primary stabs, but you have to capitalize on the other moves when you can do that. Um, Mega Sister can also Tailwind, which is always useful, but Defogging is probably one that stands out most. Though to you be naturally bulky, being able to defog hazards, and of course, since you have immunity poison, let's face it, you have the combination of doing really, really, really well. So, overall, while Sister doesn't get a lot of moves, I would say, that are relevant, the few it gets really, really just make it stand out. Uh, we also have one thing that it has over Sister or Pinsir that I think is really good, that is Roost. As stated before, Pinsir lacking it is unfortunate, and Sister getting Roost is really, really good, mainly because of its mixed bulk. It is able to not only defog pretty safely, but also able to Roost or set up in front of a lot of Pokemon's face, because it doesn't necessarily fear any move that comes in the way, unless it's super effective. And since you only have to worry about one move that is super effective, you can easily say whether or not you can actually go for a setup versus a certain matchup. Making Mega Pinsir one of the strongest threats in OU and leagues, uh, because it's just one of those Pokemon that it, it just works. It barely has a natural predator that does force it out. The few that does really doesn't like being switched in upon it, and of course, due to slow piloting, it can actually be a prediction game where you can get out before it even starts and pick it up that threat already. It also can pursuit. Just mentioning it out there, it is a very, very complete threat as its own. So what this matchup really boils down to is whether or not the bulk on Mega Scissor is enough to outprevail Mega Pinsis just tremendous overarching power and yeah you know for the longest time i really really was leaning towards scissor but once i actually looked upon pincer and started to realize what tremendous threat it really was i think this match had become a lot more closer than i initially wanted it to be mega pincer due to his really really strong speed here is a threat to be dealt with and actually be forced to actually reckon with however when it comes to its stamina and pressure play, since both really just stand out really good with the bulk, it really comes down to which can actually capitalize on their bulk better. And here is where I think Pinsir isn't as glorious as Mega Scissor are. So I given this win to Mega Scissor and it has only to do actually with recovery in mind. Because I think on their own they really, really, really are good. It just Pinsir is in for long game while Pinsir could sadly be forced out and do the self rock being willow down really fast, which is something that Scissor isn't necessarily lacking. That said though, I really just kind of reminisce a little bit about Mega Pinsir, because I don't think most people actually understood this, but Mega Pinsir was actually the strongest Mega uh, to get it with the likes of Mega Lucario and uh, Mega Kangaskhan when it was in the meta in OU. reason Pinsir was so dangerous was because there were so few Pokemon that actually had Self Rocks. And, uh, you know, until Bank was open, they really only has, I do believe, Garchomp. The bulky Garchomp was the one you used for Stealth Rocks in that meta. And it was set up fodder for Pinsir, who potentially could sweep from there on out. Um, there really was nothing like that. And uh, I really like Pinsir because of that. At the same time, I really hate playing OU. Because once you saw me a Pinsir, you knew, unless you had Stealth Rocks, you, you were going to have a rough time. And it never failed. It was one of those really, really good Pokemon. Once Bank opened, though, um, Pinsir definitely got pushed back. They got pushed back for a lot of other reasons, but Stealth Rock was definitely one of them. And since it couldn't capitalize on it itself, it actually has a Stealth Rock as its egg move. Uh, it's a good set up rocks on its own, <laughs> which is kind of cool, actually. But it never really got back. However, in League Concept, I think Pinsir showed over and over again how dangerous that Pokemon is. While I would say that due to the overarching theme of Scissor, it can't win versus that because Scissor has a lot of more variety involved with it, I definitely say that that uh, there are no other Pokemon like Mega Pinsir. It is probably the second best bug in the meta 
and um, with the, how the meta is developing, debatably, Pinsir could actually be, well, debated to be better than Scissor. It all comes down to personal preferences. However, I think Scissor is more consistent, consistently threatening, hence why I give it a win. Uh, so that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And really, what do you guys think? Which Pokemon do you think deserve to win? And of course, as always, join us next week for this matchup. <laughs>